Welcome to our webinar on uh, Packer tests or Lujon tests with the Datgel Advanced Institute tool, Gint Add-in. So a little bit, just a little bit about me briefly. I'm uh, Phil Wade. I'm the uh, founder and managing director of Datgel. Um, I've, I'm a geotechnical engineer, like many of you. I have around uh, 20, years of experience in geotechnical engineering and geotechnical data management uh, and I'm the main architect of many of our Datgel add-ins as well. So the uh, today we will be, uh, it's, it's not a very long webinar, about 20 minutes, uh, we're just going to introduce the Datgel and Gint solution initially, briefly, and then we'll get into the details of the, um, the advanced in-situ tool. Uh, I'll do a real demo in the sense that I'll show you the software, we'll do a preview, see the calculations. Uh, and I'll talk to you about how you can, um, what, what's your next step, trialing the software. We have some other webinars coming up as well. Um, oh yeah, uh, questions. Uh, there is this Q&A, qu question and answer interface. You can click on a button uh, to launch that. And that's the best place for you to ask questions. You can do that as we go if you want. And I will also raise uh, a moment, you know, at the end where you can, I'll answer them all at the end. I won't answer them as we go. So uh, overall, right, Datgel has developed plugins or add-ins to Gint, right? So we have this solution. Our goal is to help you manage and report all types of geotechnical data in one system. Uh, and that, you know, a packer test is one one part of that. Um, also, we deal with many other types of data from lab, monitoring, boreholes, so on. So, so Gint, as many of you probably know, is it's developed by Bentley Systems. Um, it brings the core functionality. It's the, the base program of what we're using today. Um, and it has a, you know, what's special about Gint is it has a proper relational database behind it that it can be well designed to, you know, deal with all types of data, which is what Datgel does on top of it. Datgel, we, we are a, well, we're, let's think of, the, think of us as your partner to use Gint. So we will provide you with add-ins to, to further get closer to where you want to be. We can do further customization and development to meet your exact needs. Um, we understand geotechnical data uh, we have three people in our business who have that background. Um, and we have, well, we offer a whole range of these add-ins. We have about 230 companies in 30 countries using them. And we can resell Gint to many companies in, uh, well, pretty much anywhere. So um, the layout, right, of the solution of Gint and Datgel, got the core Gint program. The DGD tool sits around that. And the advanced in situ tool is one of our geotechnical tools. Now you don't need to have the DGD tool to use the advanced in situ tool, but it does um, seamlessly plug in to that. So if you choose another database structure, there would be just a little bit of report design does it needed to, you know, reference the right fields in your, your current library and project. Um, Okay, moving on to the actual topic of today. Um, so the advanced in situ tool uh, currently only does packer test calculations or Lujon water test pack calculations. Um, now these are done to the Holsby 1976 method paper. Um, and it is quite, you know, it's being used by a couple of major consultants with varying types of geology. So we had to deal with some variations of the fixed time and the fixed volume approach, depending on the type of, you know, how permeable the rock is. Um, and it will calculate a Lujon and the hydraulic conductivity as the final answer. Now there's options, there's ways for you, it's an interactive interpretation. Um, you need to decide like what is the, the flow type uh, and you can override the results that finally gets reported if you want to. Um, 
And what's, what's really good is it fits in with your other data. Yes, you could do this in Excel. Uh, if you had a big project, you might have hundreds or maybe more than a thousand Excel files of different packet tests. Certainly I worked on a project like that once, there's hundreds. And um, it's a bit unwieldy. Maybe you wanted to change how you're analyzing data. You have to go to a hundred spreadsheets or a thousand spreadsheets and do it again. So this, this tool allows you to do it all in a database with validated calculations that are locked away in the DLL. It's documented, we have user, you know, there's a user guide online. Um, and as soon as you've done the analysis, you can present the results on your borehole log immediately. So that's sort of raises to the next, next screen here. So you get that efficiency of immediately doing that. You can export to AGS format immediately if that's your need. Um, you could also, now I can't say we've done every dot point here, but this, these are ideas I think we should. Um, you could have a summary table report, a graphic table report, uh, histograms and bar charts showing the distribution of different geological units. Um, you could have plots of data versus depth and elevation by different boreholes or geological units. You can see scatter plots, you know, these sorts of reports can be instantly easily set up within a few hours and uh, you could then reuse them over and over again. Um, in civil tools, uh, if anyone attended my last webinar, uh, we covered it there. So in Gin civil tools, you could connect to the packet test result table and present the data in the 3d bar charts uh, and or spheres or text down the hole. All of that would work. Uh, and you can present the results on fence diagrams. Um, so on, in the DATGL fence and map tool, that is already uh, developed as histograms or plots or text. Um, so having everything in the one system from the beginning will save you significant amount of time. And uh, there's another one that comes to mind, which I didn't know. You could collect the data in uh, Gint Collector. Remember back here, we've got the Gint Collector program. You could set up the forms in there to collect the information. Then it syncs back to the office. So, you know, within a few minutes after the test, you could have the results in the office and somebody could be analyzing them. So it's the advantage. So let's now jump to Gint. Here it is. Um, let's start at the top of the hierarchy, right? For many of you, you'd be familiar with Gint. Um, so got the project table. So just keep in mind, this essentially is just a very cut down version of the DGD tool database, just has the tables that are needed for the reporting examples that we're doing for Lujon tests. So project table, point table, where we've identified the boreholes, listed the boreholes and some other relevant information. Uh, the sample tables here, because we have Point load test results getting summarized on the final report. We have core table and these other tables basically because it's summarized on the report. You'll see this in a minute. Um, so the real table of interest is under IS, meaning in situ, and other types of tests. Other than so it's not, not a compaction related test or rock test or something. Uh, um, so anyway, just the grouping. Uh, here's the table. And so I already, this is the example that you can download off our website. So we have a the range of different styles of test count reading methods here. Um, and you can see that once you enter the reading method and click save, then it will, it will start to color the, the cells. Like, so for the fixed volume, these flow meter readings and volume readings here don't apply. So they are grayed out uh, and only the fields down the bottom here that matter and you enter data. Um, so, so obviously the, the, well, not, I mean, obvious, but the, uh, let's talk about the colors. So the brown fields are, and yellow fields, yellow fields, you must enter. The brown fields are the data entry that matters to the calculation. Um, this color here is this greeny brown field. It might be entered or it might come from another table or, you know, maybe calculated. That's more the point. 
And the, um, the orange fields are metadata, so they don't play a role in the calculation, but they could well appear on the report. Um, and so if we you know, clear these green fields here, and I will also, if I wanna make the, um, the final result calculate, I need to clear both of these fields because that allows you to override the final result. So click save, there's the calculation. And we can preview the result from input, the final report. So click preview. And this is exactly what would be printed if you chose to print it. So we can zoom in. Um, you can see some of this information was on those metadata, other tables. And here's the actual result. It's even the description is grabbed. Okay, I think that comes from the actual table. But these come off from the RQD table, the, the uh, IS50 table. It's a dynamically grabbed. So of course the report can be customized. So it's, it's very simple, of course, to put your logo on, but if you want to redesign the, the layout of the report, that's not so hard. As long as you keep the, the guts of it, the, the, the real business logic here unchanged, you want to change the header or the footer, that's you know, not a big hassle, not hard. So exit preview, it'll go back to input. So now we can click on the fixed time graph, you'll see for the fixed time, you don't have to fill in every interval. If you want to stop at five minutes, that's fine. Just do the first five minutes or you do the full 10 minutes. It's an option. Um, we do the five minute interval, which was the original one we wrote. So we just hide, you know, the blocking out the columns you don't need for that concept. So I can preview this one. So, so the, the, um, the tables are dynamically changed depending on the type of test you're doing. All right, let's go to output now. Um, and I'll just show you how easy it is to then print off every single do every single one, I don't have to pick them. So it's a graph report, right? So to use this tool, you need to have GIMP Professional or GIMP Professional Plus. So I guess we're just, I just about finished my demo. So if you have some questions, this is a good time to start thinking about that. And, uh, type them into the Q and A. It's not a very big topic. It's like I said, it's only the whole thing's only gonna go for 20 minutes today. Uh, I guess while that's going, I can point out that the docs are on our docs.jill.com. You go to the slash support, we'll give you the, the, um, the home page, let's say of the docs. And then you can click on advance in situ tool and back there. Uh, and I, I suggest you look at the quick start guide as a starting point. Um, but the details are in, you know, in depth details are in the user guide. All right, here's our, um, here's all the PDF results. Now, if you use the Datgel output tool to PDF your reports, you can actually get the right key sets printing on each page. So, I, I, yep. Well, I guess Antoinette just asked, is it possible to bulk print the result sheets? Well, I guess that's what I just did. Or did you have something else in mind? All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint.
All right. Um, so, uh, all right, we have a question. Um, uh, the GIN collector tool. Uh, well, that's not the topic of this um, this PowerPoint, this this presentation today. It's something I covered two weeks ago. But I, I think we can uh, run a. I, I will run another webinar directly only on the um, the GIN collector. So that I'll fit that in over the next couple of months. But uh, I, I guess an overview, just a slight sort of describe, you know, answer the question a bit. What is the GIN collector? GIN collector is an Android app. It's developed by Bentley Systems. Uh, it is customizable. It 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 um, it, it uh, links to your GIN project database structure and your library, and um, so it allows you to you know. Um, within the GINT ecosystem to collect data in the field, click a button on the, in the, on the Android app to sync the data to the cloud. And then go to, you go to GINT in your, in your office, on your computer, you click a button and it syncs the data down into your current project. So uh, that's the, in, in overview. Um, right. Well, the next, the next step for you, to evaluate the uh, advanced in situ tool uh, is uh, firstly you need GINT. So if you don't have GINT, drop me an email and I will uh, send you the installer because that's not on our website. The, uh, the trial download is on our website here. This is the address. Uh, I just showed you the docs page. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email um, tech technical questions. You can email support at datgel.com. If you want to um, purchase or need a quote, I guess you can just email me or email sales at datgl.com. It's on the next page, actually. Um, got some upcoming events you may want to attend. We have these, we have two training courses online, one in Asia Pacific time zone, 11 to 15 May, six hours a day. Oh, you know, six hours teach time, seven hours from start to finish. Uh, and then we have an online course for the Europe. Europe, Middle East, Africa time zone spread out over um, four days in over two weeks where it's um, seven hours or eight hours teach time a day. I forgot how many. Um, and we have uh, a series of webinars on over the coming couple of months. We, are, we will be advertising each one as we uh, you know, set up the details. And if you're wondering what's going on, you can look on our news page on our website. Um, right. So just got a question. Um, are we going to share the recording? Yes, we will. We will put it on our YouTube channel. I will send a follow up email once we've created that in the next sort of week or so. Um, so if you do need a, uh, quote or have, you know, sales inquiries, you can email me or sales at that See. So, uh, all right. So, Questions, somebody has jumped in with a question here. Uh, are the calcs based on ISO 22282? Uh, I have not, I haven't attempted to do that. We couldn't look at that if you're interested in the software. Um, so at this moment, uh, no, unless you think it's exactly the same. All right, another question here. Are the pressures based on the transducer readings within the borehole? as well as the gauge. Um, I don't think, I think it's the gauge, but I probably will have to look, take that uh, question on notice and get back to you. I guess the transducer in the borehole is measuring the pressure. Is that right? Nothing else? Maybe we can take that question offline. I probably need to clarify it a bit. Any, any other questions for anyone? Okay, I guess that uh, brings us to the end of our webinar. Um, so we will send you a video of this as well. Uh, and as I said, you can uh, go onto our website and download the trial and give it a go. Thanks everyone, have a great day.